I'm Dr. Andy Canops of Canops Equine. Today, we're going to discuss lameness examinations of your horse. What we look for in a lameness examination is gait abnormalities. Normally, a horse's gait is symmetrical and smooth. When something either doesn't feel right when you're riding your horse or doesn't look right to you or your trainer, when the horse is in hand may indicate a gait abnormality that needs examination. These examinations may amount to very subtle lamenesses that are very difficult for you to see all the way to full non-weight bearing lamenesses. And the degree and extent of the lameness examination will vary based on the nature of that lameness, either severe or very mild. What you want to have available when your veterinarian arrives for the exam is a good detailed history of when the lameness was first seen, what was first seen regarding the gait abnormality, and what, if any, treatments may have been undertaken before the exam. You'll want to have a good lead rope a lunge line, and potentially your riding tack, because a subtle lameness may only be evident when you're in the saddle. The goals of the lameness examination are to make as detailed a diagnosis as possible. We want to determine where the major site of discomfort is, what part of the leg or back or neck or what have you, and then what is causing that discomfort so we can offer treatment options and also provide you with a prognosis. You know, what are our chances of using treatment A with having a full result of a sound horse? We start the examination by looking at the horse from a bit of a distance. How does the horse stand? Does the horse point with a foot? Does he not bear weight on a particular leg? Does he have recognizable swelling in any part of the leg that wasn't present before the lameness started. Those facts are really important to assess uh, while we're asking the history from the owner or trainer to determine what events may have led up to the lameness. We move up onto the horse and do a detailed palpation of neck, back, and limbs, looking for sites of discomfort on palpation, swellings, extra fluid in joints, and areas that we may focus more detailed evaluations. After that, I like to see the horse moved in hand on a hard surface. The ideal surface is a flat driveway, asphalt, uh, or concrete but a flat surface that's hard will give us more information about subtle lamenesses. We start by walking the horse in about a 30 yard long straight line, turn and walk back to the examiner. What we look for at the walk is how the horse sets the feet down. Do the feet land heel toe, which is normal? and land evenly from the inside to the outside hoof wall. Normally they would land all but simultaneously. Also we see at the walk how the horse tracks. Does the horse uh, swing the legs in or stand very narrow at the walk? Those, that's information that we can use further down the examination line. Following the walk, we'll see the horse in hand at the trot. The horse is trotted on that same straight line of about 30 yards. With the lead rope held loosely so that the horse may use its head and neck if needed. And we assess movement of the head and neck and also symmetry or lack of symmetry as the horse trots. Following that straight line trot, we'll do manipulations, which include flexion tests. Flexion tests are used to help localize or narrow down 
the anatomic side of the lameness. For example, we flex the lower limb, which includes the fetlock, pastern, and coffin joints to stress those areas of the body. We hold flexion for a period of half a minute or so, and then trot the horse off. If the horse is showing lameness following that flexion, that may indicate that some degree of soreness is in that anatomic area. We do these flexions of the lower limbs, all four. We do the carpus or knees. We do the full hind limb flexion, which stresses the hip, stifle, and hock. And we can also stress just the stifle on a flexion test. All that information is recorded, as is our physical findings, and keep track of any of the abnormalities that we find. Following the flexions, we do hoof testers. In horses without pads on their feet, we like to determine whether or not there's sensitivity in the feet. The reason for that is that 90% of all front limb lamenesses are found in the foot. Further localization of the soreness in the horse, if a lameness is evident, is based on nerve blocks, where we put local anesthetic in nerves to desensitize a part of the leg. If, for example, we do a nerve block at the heel of the horse, which blocks out a good portion of the foot, and the horse goes from lame to sound, we know that the pain is happening down in the foot. In horses that have very subtle lameness, we need to try to narrow down the site of lameness in other ways. One straightforward way is to saddle up the horse and see how the horse moves in its normal tack. The uh, weight of the horse uh, going in circles or figure eights may show us lameness where working just in a straight line will not. Also, just taking the horse on a lunge line and putting in a circle will provide additional stresses to the horse that aren't present in a straight line. A high-tech means of determining sites of lameness, that's a very objective measure of gait symmetry or lack of that, is with a gait analysis system. There are portable gait analysis systems that are uh, have sensors that are attached to the horse and the horse can be worked under saddle, in hand, or can be worked on the lunge line. And the computer program makes an assessment based on data from those sensors and tells us whether or not a limb is lame, whether or not it's an impact or push off lameness, and whether or not it's a severe lameness or a mild lameness. We've recorded our lameness examination findings, such as the degree of lameness, which can be recorded as zero being sound and five being non-weight bearing. That's the AAEP lameness scale or any other scale that your veterinarian finds most helpful. Then we record our abnormal physical findings such as thickenings or joint swellings, reaction to hoof testers, and then certainly the response to flexion tests and nerve blocks. Once we have narrowed down the anatomic site of the lameness, to make a specific diagnosis, we need to undertake imaging. On-farm imaging may include digital x-rays or digital ultrasound. If those findings are negative and we have a significant lameness, your veterinarian may recommend advanced imaging, such as a bone scan, magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, or computed tomography, CT. Again, the whole goal is to make a specific diagnosis so we can provide a specific treatment with a hope-for positive outcome. If you have any other questions regarding lameness examinations, please check the SmartPak Horse Health Library.